I mean, like you want your grandmother and your mom and your dad and, you know, your school teachers and your government workers and all of these, you know, like the sheep basically out there that are between, you know, the sheep, the sheepdog and the persuadables. Um, you need them to see the value. And I think that if you're using like dark market words around it, then that echoes, you know, what the government's been saying about the crypto markets for, you know, over 10, 10, 15 years now, right? Yeah. Oh, it's used to launder money and the bad people over there use it when they know full well that, you know, printed cash is what's used to commit crime. This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source and you always control your own keys. Cake Wallet is trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. And supporting us is easier than ever by typing in MoneroTalk.crypto in your Cake Wallet send address field to send us a tip. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman interviews Richard Cooper an entrepreneur and investor who shared his thoughts on government control, social credit, and cryptocurrencies. Are you a sheep or sheep dog? Find it out on this episode. Narrow Talk starts now. All right. Rich, what's going on, man? How you doing, Douglas? Good, good, good. Just getting home from work. How about yourself? I'm always working. <laughs> Is this so? Is this your thing? Is this your your full time gig? This is my full time gig. I, I left um, you know the world of running a business and having employees and everything that uh, creates entanglements around that about two, 2015 and uh, on a part time basis and then full time. I've been doing pretty much YouTube and content creation in my community and writing books uh, since about 2017. How'd you get, I guess, uh, maybe you want to intro yourself a little bit with regards to the type of stuff you write, you know, top. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we don't know each other so good. You know, we just, uh, met briefly before the show, but, um, I did a cast a week or two ago about, um, some of the, uh, obvious things I see going on out there with, uh, the world economic forum and Klaus Schwab and, uh, the great reset and everything that's tied into that. And I've been an advocate of, uh, the cryptocurrency market since 2017. And one of the things that I talked about was privacy and this new central central bank digital currency. And, uh, apparently, um, your community mentioned me to you and this is how we sort of connected, but, um, they were probably watching me, the ones that were watching that content simply because I spent a lot of time helping guys unplug from society's comforting lies. And I unplugged them with the cold, hard, uncomfortable truth. <laughs> and you probably know this already doing what you do with, you know, Monero and privacy and that sort of stuff. But, uh, comforting lies sell a lot better to the general population than the uncomfortable truth. Um, so I talk a lot about, you know, attraction and desire and, you know, what helps guys, you know, do better with women and money and self-care and all that is, of course, a function of that, which is which is where that cast came from. Awesome. man! how'd you get into that? What like what, were you doing something before that somewhat related or? Well, my background actually in my business is in credit card debt relief. So I probably spent a good um, almost 20 years. Um, helping Canadian consumers get out of uh, credit card debt, unsecured credit card debt, um, and uh, it worked very well. I built one of the one of the leading companies in Canada. Was awarded three times for hypergrowth, uh, best company culture, entrepreneur okay. of the year nomination by Ernest and Young, that sort of stuff. And um, I know it like the back of my hand. I also know how banks operate. I know how the government brings down legislation to. Uh, basically have the control that they want over the population. And that also kind of works for the banks as well. Like one of the bills that I lobbied back in 20, 2012, 2013 was called Bill 55 here in Ontario. And um, it, it basically aimed to try to prevent consumers from settling their debt for, for less than what they owe, basically giving them the utmost control over their money and their credit and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I spent a good deal of time dealing with the government, which is kind of what led to my own unplugging, um, you know, when it came to finances, but the, but the stuff that I'm really known for, for the most part with my channel, and my book is how I help men understand, you know, the actual dynamics between attraction and desire between the sexes. Yeah. How does that relate? I guess, cause it relates to the whole unplugging. The whole yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. It all it all ties into okay. the unplugging okay. of the comforting lies. You know, men are sold. Uh, you know, when it comes to women, they're sold the lie that you know, just be a nice guy and she'll like you for who you are. And they find out after uh, after a couple of heartbreaks that doesn't work that way. The same sort of way that at some point, you know, guys realize that the government doesn't have their best interests at heart, or neither do the banks or the credit card companies or anything out there. And you really kind of have to take you know control of your own sovereignty. We'll get into the crypto. Let me let me ask you some uh, male female uh, issue. All right, man, it's your you know, show. Go. Yeah, this, this is fun since we're always talking about Monero. Anyway, so do you think, um, you know, uh, the what the ideal man or what a what a female is idealistically attracted to is that kind of been the same for for hundreds of years, thousands of years? Is fundamentally is it changing now, or the, is the lie that it hasn't changed at all? It's the same exact thing. The, the the fundamentals of attraction when you spend time reading evolutionary psychology content have pretty much been the same for eternity. You know, we're we're just <laughs> slightly more advanced lizards than what we were 10,000 years ago. And we figured out digital currency and how to build roads and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, so that hasn't changed that much. What what has changed is how human beings, you know, communicate and do things today. Like we know with digital currency, I can send you money right now and you can send money to me. We don't need anybody's permission. Uh, it can't be censored. There's any number of you know ways to break that down. I'm sure your audience is fully you know familiar with it. But what we're seeing happen with uh, the digitize digitization of communication right now and uh, social media is uh, a significant change in the way that men and women behave. Um, like, imagine talking to your grandparents about a, a platform like OnlyFans. <laughs> Would they be able to get their head around it in the 1950s? They wouldn't, right? But only something like that can exist today, you know, given the current circumstances and the environment out there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't know. I think they would actually be able to understand that. I don't know, right? Uh, I think I think my granddad and my nana would have a difficult time. My my grandparents, you know, from England would have a difficult time. I think my grandparents from Greece on the other side would also have a very difficult time understanding that those concepts yeah just as they would understanding digital money right mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah i mean at the end of the day it's just all these um you know humanity really hasn't hasn't changed at all right uh digital money versus fiat versus you know uh religion uh you know, it's just uh, this humans uh having collect beliefs in and collective beliefs and abstract ideas mm -hmm. um, right that's been around for for quite some time um and money being one of those um so what yeah what is your what is your take on on crypto then where what, what's kind of your, your your elevator pitch on crypto or your take on crypto the the elevator pitch depends on the amount of floors that we have if we're going up two floors it's just buy it and hold it right okay if, you know, if we have some more time and we're heading up maybe uh, a few dozen floors and, you know, we can talk about the permissionless value of, you know, much of uh, digital currency, some of the privacy values of digital currency. What do you see as its value proposition? Like it's like true breakthrough purpose. Well, depending on what sort of, um, you know, which one we're talking about, because last time I checked, there's something like 18,000 different ones on there. And at, as you know, most of them are just carbon copies of the other ones and they're mostly garbage and they'll disappear very, you know, as quickly as they appeared. But um, I think the beauty of the blockchain and um, the way it operates is it's censorship resistant. It doesn't need anybody's permission. It basically solves banking in parts of the world where there is no banking. I mean, one of the things that frustrates me to no end is the amount of money that banks and credit card companies make. And if I call them, I can't get anything done. I'm on hold for an hour listening to garbage music, about to talk to somebody with a very low IQ that can't really help me, that I generally have to escalate to a manager to get something done. And I've consumed two or three hours of my time to get their permission to do something. If I want to go to the bank and make a deposit and it's more than $10,000, I get asked every question under the sun, right? It, it's like, you know, <laughs> I remember one time, which which was kind of one of like the uh, frying pan of the forehead moments, you know, for me when it came to cryptocurrency is I wanted to withdraw money and they're asking me all these questions and I'm just like, it's my money. Can I just have it, please? Right? Like, why do I need to tell you everything about my life? Right? And, um, you know, it was that 
that point that I really started to dive into alternative types of uh, currency and, and, and moving money around. That was around 2017. I got my head around. I'm like, okay, this is, you know, this seems to make sense. I mean, I knew about this stuff around 2013, you know, 2012, 2013, and I was mining it on my laptop, you know, Bitcoin. Uh, somebody in my office stole the laptop, but, you know, they've got about 15 or 16 Bitcoin on it, you know, good for them. And, um, Oh, they stole it from you? The, the... Yeah, it was just a spare laptop that I was using to mine Bitcoin at the time when a processor could do something like that, quite simply. But um, yeah, so that disappeared. And then, uh, you know, I just kind of forgot about it. I talked to a couple of friends that moved into the industry and they're like, oh, you got to, you know, it's going to take over the world and all this sort of thing. And I'm like, yeah, you know, it was around the same time that I was lobbying with Bill 55 with the Ontario Parliament. And mm -hmm. I saw how the government, and the banks wanted to control money so badly. And I was like, I don't see that happening. I think they're going to shut it down. You know, they're going to try to control it. They're going to put it out of business. I didn't really know what it was at the time. Right. Got it. So, you know, it took me a little bit of getting my head around it to to figure out that this this has some real value. It's it's going to have a significant amount amount of value over time. Um, just make some good choices. And um, I talk about it when I can on my channel. Like um, I've. I've mentioned it a lot, which is which is probably why we have some crossover with our audiences, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's um, yeah, it's been tip of tongue for quite a bit for me. So what was kind of your turning point there, where you realize you know it's more than just some scam thing that you can mine and uh, maybe sell for for ten times more than what you mined it for? Uh, like what 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 led you to realizing that you know it might be something bigger? Um you know, quite a few things, you know, again, the, like there's a limited supply of most of them, right. Um, which combats inflation. It makes it go up in value over time. I mean, I was, I was dealing with Bitcoin when it was, I think I saw it on the radar screen around a hundred dollars. And I was like, I didn't, I didn't see it going to a thousand dollars. I didn't even see it going to $150, you know, at the time, but it's like, okay, you know, you start to look at the code in the matrix and you unplug from the lies and you see how, how it all works and how money flows in you know, in and out of things and why it flows into things and, you know, is held in things. And you realize, okay, you know, this is, this is more than just fun internet money. You know, you know, some of it's a store of value, some of it's private, some of it can be programmed. Um, the scary part though, is how the governments are going to start using programmable money with central bank digital currencies. I think that's a potential huge problem, you know, for society, um, somewhere well, that, between two to three to five to 10 years down the road. Yeah, well, I don't know if you saw it today. There was an announcement. I believe the announcement came today. I just saw it on Twitter. I don't know if it was old, but I'm pretty sure it was from today. Um, that they're going to start developing uh, an e-cash. So uh, in addition to a central bank digital currency, the Treasury Department is uh, uh, potentially going to start uh, developing an e-cash here in the United States. That how, is that, how is that different from CBDC? Uh, well, the CBDC is something that would be issued by a uh, central bank. Um, and and e-cash is, is looking to be something that actually replaces ca physical cash. So be more uh, be a bearer instrument, uh, but in digital form. Uh, wouldn't run on the blockchain or any anything, mm -hmm. um, but would be like um, DigiCash, like uh, what was Ch Chom was the inventor of that. So this... Basically, you, you know, you'd pass um, these bearer assets peer to peer through hardware devices. So it'd be the the hardware, the hardware device. And I guess essentially you'd be able to run it on your phone, but it wouldn't run off a network. It wouldn't run off of uh, a blockchain, uh, which is so really, it's, so really it's kind of like digital currency light. Uh, yes, yeah, so it would be it would be issued. So the the treasury would issue it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where the centralized control would come. But mm -hmm. I guess the idea is once it's issued and once you have it, uh, and then you pass it on to somebody else, it's not being stored on a, on a blockchain. Okay, so it's, it's not so it's not particularly programmable. It's a store of value, but you right, can't... I arguably okay. wouldn't arguably wouldn't be programmable. Um, and then... it seems a little suspect that they would want to put something like that out without without being being able to control it. Because I mean, to me, it seems like the biggest incentive for them to digitize money and say exchange your you know your paper plastic money you know whatever happens to be for these digital tokens is so they can program it track it monitor it sure. censor it prevent you from buying things with it yeah no i, I carbon don't, I, tax it right i don't i don't trust it but it is, yeah. it is interesting and then they're saying how you know they'd want want it to be open source tech 
so people can can view and understand and trust that there's no back door built into it essentially okay well that, that sounds it, a little bit better than cbdc then yeah yeah no it's definitely so it's kind of filling that niche right because you do have you know people that are pointing out the flaws of cbdc's not just people like us but or is it going to be a bait and switch where they're like hey guys take this you know like everything will be fine give us your paper money and they're like ah you know what this isn't working out maybe a year later and say we're going to go blockchain and cbdc it yeah i have no i don't know i don't know what the uh you're, i think you're better at predicting uh i know the government pretty good if <laughs> if i were to bet the farm then i would bet be on that. there's gotta be some scam going on there yeah. right Right. What I'm curious is, is what does it do to things like Monero, right? So if they were to move in this direction and pass this act, it's like call, you can call it like the eCash Act, right? So then mm -hmm. we're actually a lot money towards doing this and issuing this through the treasury. Um, what does that then mean for something like Monero? Does that mean like Monero, like most certainly then won't get banned in the United States? There won't be any attempts because if they're going to, you know, issue this and say, this is, this is okay. Uh, it's okay for people to have this ability to uh, transact with this e-cash, which according to them is, is perfectly cash-like and, and it's completely private. So nobody can see what you're doing with your e-cash. Then I have to imagine there wouldn't be too many arguments that they then have against something like Monero, right? If they're concerned about it being used for financing terrorism or whatever it is. Or would they then just have to then admit that eCash is something different, right? Because like they'd basically be forced to say, "Oh no, well we're not worried about uh, Terrence financing with eCash for you know this reason." Yeah, that, that's, um, yeah, that's I'm, difficult to say. I mean, yeah. um, I mean, can they ban Monero? Is it something that they can't? I mean, they can ban it at the on ramps and off ramps, right? Well, I guess, le you know, the government can come out and say, you know, it's illegal to use Monero. I mean, effectively, can they ban it? No. You know, it's just software. Uh, mm -hmm. It'd be really hard to stop, right? As you know, it's permissionless, right? People can just, especially Monero, because it's mineable with uh, CPUs. You don't even need ASICs. Mm -hmm. So effectively, it'd be very difficult to ban. But I guess they could state that it's banned, right? Uh, whether right. they actually be able to stop it is another question. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of questions that um, you know sit on the horizon for us to entertain today. But uh, I mean, there's one thing for sure: the government is 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 certainly imposing its will and beliefs and um, ideas more and more on the public as the decades go on. And uh, it's it seems to me like that's not going to change. It's it's just going to keep getting more intense and um, more controlling of everything that you do with your life. So, I mean, anything that you can do to take back some of your own sovereignty and control that with any kind of digital currency inclusive of Monero is totally fine with me, man. Like, I'm all about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and that's that's what I gathered when I listened to your, to your one show. Uh, you seem to be all about that, which is awesome. And I, it's obviously, it's great that you're using your platform to get those ideas out there. So, I guess, do you not, do you see it essential for, privacy to be embedded in these i mean i guess what i heard when i heard you talking about it you kind of said you know something like monero is great if you need privacy mm -hmm. uh but if you need store of value use bitcoin yeah uh, but ultimately do you do you are you concerned because monero people right this is where we really kind of differentiate from mm -hmm. bitcoiners is um we want to create a we want to tech to get adopted that's as unstoppable as possible, something mm -hmm. that can't easily be co-opted by governments. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Bitcoiners claim the same, but they seem to be okay with the fact that it's completely transparent. Mm -hmm. And essentially, in Monero land, we see that as an attack surface that the governments can use to effectively co-op it, right? Because if yeah. they connect identities to people, to uh, addresses, they can then therefore track and trace them. And sure, people can always send their Bitcoin. It'd be difficult to stop. Mm -hmm. uh, but because they know who's sending it and how much they're sending and who they're sending to, uh, they could wield power over that. Yeah, it seems like, well, it's it's pretty clear that Bitcoin's a better store of value than Monero. I mean, if you just compare it over the last um, five or six years since I started looking at this stuff, um, the value of fiat stored in Bitcoin is more valuable today than what Monero is. But I think that, um, I mean, it could potentially change. 
It could. Um, I don't think you're going to see a flippening or anything like that, but um, I think that there's there's a use case for it. I like it. I've had some of it. Um, I still have a little bit of it, but um, yeah, I mean, like you could swap into whatever you need to. I mean, if you need to, uh, you know, move into privacy, you could do this washing process with Bitcoin, buy some Monero, transfer whatever you need to. Um, it's still got value. Like it still has a use case. I just don't see it as strong a store of value as Bitcoin is simply because that's where all the institutional money is piling in. So as it piles in, the value goes up. I don't, I don't know that you're going to see banks and financial institutions do that one narrow. I think it's going to be sort of like a second layer or like, uh, you know, it's like you have like these different layers and classes of these different types of cryptocurrency. So yeah, if that makes sense. No, 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 it totally makes sense. Um, but is the fact that <clears throat> governments uh and institutions that stand to lose the most from something like a you know uh bitcoin are ultimately okay with it indicative of the fact that it's not really doing a good job at at disrupting uh these governments and institutions yeah, and it's not going to until there's more mainstream adoption. There's not even mainstream adoption of Bitcoin, right? I mean, like what? There's there's uh, one or two percent of the population, and that's the most popular cryptocurrency on the uh, markets. Um, so it's so it's still fringe. It's still very early on in the adoption curve. I mean, there's there's still a ways to go with all cryptocurrencies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the fact that it that it's traceable, like, do yeah. you? You know that's that's basically that's what I'm harking on because I'm trying to. Does it bother me? No, yes, yeah, it bothers you seem me. To be all yeah. about uh, you know really you know getting to the core and always realizing yeah. that you know governments are always going to find a way, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there's always and they're always trying to to wield and gain more power over us, and they've been doing a pretty good job at it lately. Yeah. And as 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 we move more and more into a digital sphere where all of all of our actions are essentially you know digital in some in some way or connected to the digital grid that they're able to wield more power over us than ever before right because mm -hmm. they know everything about everybody and can run algorithms and can you know uh, it's surveillance capitals right yeah well i mean uh, of course it's an issue but i'm not i'm not super like i'd rather take the appreciation and the value on you know the larger chunk on bitcoin with them knowing about it but they can't stop me from you know memorizing 24 words and hopping on a plane flying somewhere and plugging into the internet and creating a new wallet over there and taking my like you know i don't see it as a huge deal i see it as a deal but i don't see it as that much of a deal where um i'm not going to store more of my value on the blockchain and bitcoin right what if they want to start assessing, you know, unrealized capital gains and like at some uh, crazy, you know, crazy rate? I have. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I have um, I have some contacts within the government that have that have basically um, enlightened me on the level of incompetence, which I mean, I already saw enough of it when I was doing the lobbying for the two years, you know, about a decade ago. But the incompetence is a lot greater than what we think it is. And they're a lot further behind than where we think it is. I'm not saying it's not going to come. I'm not saying that they um, aren't going to try to tax unrealized gains. It's just that I think it's quite a few years off. So I'm not too worried about that right now. Um, when I see it being a real problem, then I can do some pivoting then. Okay. So you're you're not really. Uh, I mean, obviously, you're a long term thinker, though. I mean, are you constantly kind of strategizing? Uh, I imagine as to oh, where, yeah. where governments are going next. Oh yeah, yeah. But you you think we ha we have time? Things aren't going to get that that serious yet. Oh, Maybe. I think it's going to get very serious. Like I think that people vastly underestimate how involved the government's going to be in their life in the next three to five, maybe ten years. Right. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely within a decade like you've never seen before. If you're still alive in 10 years, you're going to have government involvement at a level that you've, that you've never even predicted. It might even come sooner. You know, it's, it's, it's probably going to start coming in the next three years, but then about five, you're definitely going to see the effects of that. Um, so I'm keeping an eye on stuff. Like I've got my finger on the pulse. I'm watching what's going on. I know what's going on with the governments of the world. I, you know, I see the code in the matrix. I'm not stupid, you know? Yeah. No, I didn't think so. I, I I definitely don't get that impression. Otherwise, I mean, uh, it seems like your whole thing seems to be about you know, 
understanding understanding what the what ultimately what the scam is yes um so what were you apprehensive of, did you think bitcoin what was a scam then for quite some time like was that like your apprehension in the beginning did you think it must have been some some kind of like uh i think that scam might have been a word that i might have used but what my but what my concern was over 10 years ago was i've seen how hard the government fought to change laws to basically control the population when it came to their debt okay they didn't do anything in the legislation that i was written that i participated in the lobbying effort on to benefit the consumer it like the way that it broke down like we used to joke about this you know me and the lobbying team was we used to say well we might as well call this bill the uh, credit card protection act for their profits which is really what it boiled down to so even though you know they they basically overtly state you know to the public that oh we're here to take care of you and you know we're going to look after you and just you know keep 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 on voting for us you know we'll keep giving you free stuff people aren't very smart you know they vote for free for free stuff because they don't really want freedom so there's a cost to that right so now so now you're exchanging your freedom for control for information that goes their way and them ultimately are the government is ultimately going to be able to tell you when you can buy something, when you can travel somewhere, and they're gonna and they're gonna prevent you from doing it if they don't feel like your social credit is where it should be. The Chinese social credit system that already exists over there, we're already seeing elements of that today. I mean, like still to this day, there's a social credit system here in Ontario, Canada. I can't get on a plane and fly and come down and do a, a podcast with you or anybody else face to face in the US. I've had a number of invites over the last two years, but because my social credit is too low because I haven't taken the shots, right. I don't have a piece of paper saying that I'm vaccinated, I can't get on a plane, right? So mm -hmm. my social credit's not high enough to allow me to travel. So, you know, the people out there that think that there's no social credit or Rich, what are you talking about? You're crazy, take off your tinfoil hat. It already exists. Just wake up and look at it, right? Yeah. So why not all Monero, man? Why aren't you all in on Monero, man? Well, like this is that, so how just, does that solve my problem with that uh, travel? No, because th th these things all relay, right? So like, no, I agree. Yeah. I, I totally uh, get your, you know, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, I know I'm not vaxxed either. Uh, and you know, that, that whole thing, oh my God, made my, my skin crawl. Um, the way people to, to watch the sheep, to watch the sheep act like sheep was just, and, and that's where these, these two classes of like people are going to exist in the future. There's going to be the sheep that are plugged into the comforting lies, right. and there's going to be the, you know, the uh, sheep dogs, which have unplugged and see everything for what it is that right. basically watch the sheep, you know, run around and we kind of operate at the perimeter and we do our own thing. Right. And there's going to be a lot less of us than them. And that's just the way that it's going to have to be. Right. I mean, like you're not going to convert the sheep to think like a sheep dog. They're sheep. You, you, bah, you, that's what they do. They just <laughs> bah, all day long. They're sheep. The last, like, yeah. Is that the way it's always going to be though? Or I think so. Yeah. Be, uh, really? Yeah. I, uh, I think I don't, I don't think that a sheep over time. What's I that? I think if things like Monero work out, we tend towards uh, in more independent minded people over time. You know? Yeah, hopefully. And, you know, again, like I'm 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 fully with you on that. Like I see the argument, but you have a lot more faith in society than I do. I don't think it's as bright as you think it is. Yeah, I said over time, over time, right? <laughs> uh, and you know that's, but that's important. That's why we need to make sure. Did you ever see that movie? It's called Idiocracy. Yeah, I remember it. I don't think I ever watched the whole thing, but I remember it's a big concept. Yeah, yeah, like like that concept to me, it's like that's that's not a fictional movie for entertainment purposes. Hmm. I basically look at that and I'm like, that's kind of a documentary. You know, that's the way I see things going in society. Like people are not getting any smarter; they're definitely getting dumber. Yeah, no, scary, scary stuff, man. Um, but but I guess the point, I because you were talking about social credit score. Da, da, da. So like Bitcoin, once again, like Monero people, what they would say is that they think something like Bitcoin can be just as bad, if not worse than the current financial system and the ability for, for governments to track and surveil it and for corporations to gain data from it. I mean, it's, it's literally anybody can, can take a look at this ledger 
Mm -hmm. uh, we see a huge industry already. These chain analytics companies, they're probably like some of the most well-funded and most you know successful companies so far in crypto. Mm -hmm. uh, and their whole business model is to track and analyze the chain. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're, we're already there with, with Bitcoin. So is there, you know, wh why are we, can, why are we feeding this beast and uh, uh, hoping or allowing for this to be the thing that gets adopted when it may just take us closer to this, the dystopia instead of, you know, further away from it. Got it. Yeah. But that's where the money's going. I know, but that's, that's a problem, right? Or, I mean, sure. Let, let I'm not saying, happen. I'm not saying that that's the best way to, you know, to use the blockchain, but I'm just saying, you know, that's where the money's going. And I'm not worried about them looking at what I do with, you know, with my money. They, they already look at what I do with my money right now. It's just now I have custody of it. I don't need their permission to get it. They can't censor it. They can't stop me from sending it. Right. If I want to, you know, again, put the ledger in my pocket or, you know, minimize or memorize 24 words, I can travel with that and I can, you know, capture my crypto over there. Do they know about it? Yeah, of course they know about it because it's because it's a public ledger. Do I like that? No, I'm not a big fan of that. But that's that's not where you know the money's going. That's not where the store of value is going. Will that change? I hope so. And if I see it change, and I see you know that you know uh, something like Monero becomes a better store of value, then I'll start to move you know more of my holdings there. Mm. Yeah, no, I totally hear you. I guess the concern then there is you know is the is the number go up nature of Bitcoin you know, being used against, against us. Right. So obviously you said that's where the Monero, the money's going and you want to make money. And so do I, so do most people that are, that are, you know, not lying to themselves. Right. We want to make I don't money. see it as adversarial. But, I see it as complimentary. What do you mean? Ever? No, no, no. I'm, like I don't I, see like, like Monero and Bitcoin doing this. Like I see it as a complimentary, like synergistic sort of thing. Like, you know, sort of move up like this over time, you know, depending on what the economic, environment looks like they're not gonna like yeah i'm I not i'm that. not too worried because there's always the underground economy like mm -hmm. legitimately you and i both know that if we really wanted to get a piece of paper to travel and get proof of vaccination things you know you know there's motions in the uh ocean that can make things like that happen right so mm -hmm. it, it's like yeah it, it, is it a problem yeah but i see it as monero bitcoin all the other you know use case type of currencies that have smart contracts and all that I see them as complementarily, you know, to one another, but keeping an eye on what's going on and participating in it. Not just, you know, I see a lot of like, well, I'm a this person maximist or that person maximist. It's like, you know what? Rather than fighting with each other, let's just pile money in onto the blockchain and store it and move it and use it where we see best. And because it's a free market, obviously the one that's the best in that environment will hopefully thrive and succeed. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't disagree with that at all. I don't disagree with that at all. I just think uh, it's good to get the information out there so people, you know, know what the different utilities are, right? Uh, yes, and they prove, they prove themselves on their own. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Monero is winning is winning the use case of digital cash. It's it's taking over that use case. We saw, you know, initially it was Bitcoin because Bitcoin literally was the only one, right? Mm -hmm. So Bitcoin's first real use was the Silk Road, right? Bitcoin's too slow. It's it's not good for payments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's not good for payments where you don't want people to to know Correct. what you're doing. So right. like, yeah. Monero is taking over on the on the, in the dark markets. Um, we see, I don't know if you saw like they we, even with the ransomware, the ransomware hackers, they offer like a 20% discount if people, you, if they, you know, if they pay in Monero versus Bitcoin. Oh, no kidding. Pay their ransom. Yeah. So oh, they're getting smart. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> the, the, the mar market dynamics are playing out. Uh, but I just do this show to help kind of get that information out there, just like you do your show, right? So, so I'm trying to reveal the, re reveal the truth and give people an edge. Yeah. And the so, edge I see is if, if you really want to, uh, pick the crypto that is the truest to you know being this this disruptive technology that will 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 take power away from governments and give it to the people. You should start looking at Monero because it seems to be. So let me just touch on that um, digital ransom you know topic that you brought up because I yeah. thought that was interesting because in the last year I I um, I had an incident with somebody that I was dealing with that had their database hacked and stolen from some clown in China. 
that wanted uh, to be paid in Bitcoin to get the uh, database back. Mm -hmm. And we looked into everything we possibly could to track who this guy down guy was. And I have some very useful and powerful contacts, right? Like I have fixers in my network. So first thing I do is like, here's a problem. Who can fix it? What's it going to cost me? And we looked into it. There was literally nothing that we could do. So the company had to basically pay the ransom. And they got screwed over, by the way, because the Chinese folks said, you know, well, give us, let's just call it $20,000 in Bitcoin, you know, to get your database back. They sent it under the impression they were going to get it because they were basically handcuffed. They had nothing else. Their hands were tied. So they sent it and then they were like, yeah, you know what? We're going to need 40,000 now, you know, for you to get it. And they've already put skin in the game. They've already sent 20,000. So of course they double the payment and they finally get their database back. And there was nothing that they could do. Like even the fixers are like, you're really screwed on this one. Right? So it was more about preventative measures and making sure that there's a backup every you know minute or every hour you know depending on how they structured it but backing up the database so you know what you want to take it and hold ransom pound sand we've already got everything backed up and it's on a separate server and you haven't been able to access it we're just going to restore everything and you know see you later yeah no that's definitely the uh the but i mean something like monero would obviously offer even way more privacy than what bitcoin does but even with the level of you know operation that bitcoin's at today it's it still was like it's cheaper to actually just give them the crypto and get your database back than to try to track these guys down and do something to them yeah 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 but that but that that's changing um you know and if if the if the crime is big enough uh they will track track them down and find them with Bitcoin. Right. Right. We've seen that with Bitcoin. So with you, maybe, you know, maybe you aren't twenty thousand dollars is nothing. It's a drop in a bucket. Right. 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 But you know, just to send them that crypto. Right. Right. But if they're, you know, seizing up the, you know, the pipelines, uh, right. they're going to they're going to use Bitcoin. To, to oh, yeah. They'll throw the farm at it and figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, my point was just that, you know, as they're moving towards Monero, because, you know, it becomes obviously a lot more difficult for them to to then to then find them, which is just proving that it, that it's working as 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 intended right you know? um yeah man so i don't know tell your people to use monero <laughs> <laughs> well i did yeah i mean you watched the show didn't you yeah i did it was yeah. good it was I good did, yeah. yeah it was definitely up there on one of the uh ways to maintain your sovereignty you know yes yes so where do you see this whole so you see that you think there's going to be a few winners is that how you see it playing out yeah, this this like list of eighteen thousand cryptocurrencies can't can't go on. I mean, like maybe it will go on into perpetuity with other stuff that comes and replaces this junk, you know, like the shit coins out there. Yeah. But um I mean, we've got some clear winners. Obviously, you know, they're in the top ten, top twenty or so. Um, they kind of move around a different rank, but those seem to be the ones that actually have use cases and do something. There's I mean, there's all kinds of stuff out there that boggles the mind about, you know, the blockchain and what's on it. Like these NFTs, a lot of people are calling them overpriced JPEGs. Um, you know, there's, of course, smart contracts. There's ways to store value. There's ways to move value around privately. Um, you know, there's lots of things going on out there. And I think it's great. Like I am I am so stoked about the future of the blockchain and stuff that's on it, Monero inclusive um I, I can't wait to see how it unfolds and hopefully it, it you know it takes us in the right direction where we can regain our sovereignty and control of our lives and not have the government tell us um you know when and where we can travel and shut down our cars and if we want to buy meat they say no you're going to have to take this bag of bugs instead because you've exceeded your carbon credits because we've been tracking you i don't like any of that yeah what do you think of people that you know paint this like really ominous picture like so for you know, we allow something like Monero to get adopted. You know, it's going to be used to for people to, you know, commit crimes and they won't be able to, you know, like ransomware, right? Ransomware will be out of control. And, you know, the. Well, I mean, if you want to use that argument, then you have to shut down cash, right? Because, I mean, cash what? is the most used uh, form of uh, payment transfer today for criminal activity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, whenever you see like a drug bust, they're, you know, they're sitting in front of stacks and stacks of cash, right? But how do how do we convey that to once again the uh, the sheep, so to speak, right? Who are easily convinced by, you know, their elected officials that they have to go out and stop this evil technology. I don't think that you're going to convince the sheep, but I mean, you've got the persuadables. 
So there's people that start to ask questions. You know, it's like, you know, the same guys that normally find my YouTube channel when they go through something like a divorce and they're like, well, I was just a nice guy and I said my vows and I went to work and I did what I was supposed to do and da 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 da. And, you know, I had the 2.1 kids and I bought the house in a neighborhood that she told me to and I renovated the bathroom like she told me to. And I don't know why she's banging Kevin from sales now, right? It's like, you know, then they start to ask questions. Okay, well, hang on. Kevin from sales makes a lot more money. He's in better shape. He's got some game. You know, they start to see why she made that mate selection choice and move from him to her sort of thing. It's the same thing with money. You know, it's no different. I think that when you unplug from life's comforting lies, you know, it's a carryover in any number of ways, right? I mean, like another another comforting lies that, you know, society has been told forever is just get a J-O-B, you know, get a job. It stands for just over broke. Um, I think it was Kevin O'Leary that said it, that um, something something along the lines of uh, a salary is something that they give you to forget to get you to forget about your dreams, right? So a lot of these guys, you know, think that they're going to create immense wealth and, you know, accumulate <laughs> A ton of stuff by working for some guy and it's like it's just not true right there's more to life than just what you've been told and in fact when you start to realize that the vast majority of stuff that you've been told about life the way that you know things are supposed to operate is really a load of crap that serves them not not us then these people start to become your persuadables and that's when you can talk to them about things like monero mm. so if, for a guy who's about to get a divorce he should move all his bitcoin into monero so that uh hey this is a conversation we should have <laughs> off air right uh it is a use case it is it is definitely a it's, it's entirely use. plausible absolutely yeah yeah, yeah that, then, you know those things get lost in boating accidents too you know you never know what could happen well that's what i was just gonna say see that that's a, that's the meme that's incorrectly used among bitcoiners because that that one uh, does you know uh the authorities knock on your door and they, mm -hmm. you know, they ask for those unrealized capital gains and you say you lost your keys in a boating act. You lost your Bitcoin keys in a boating accident. Well, that doesn't, you know, once they see that that Bitcoin move, they'll be knocking on your door again. You know, potentially. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I don't I don't think the, the boating accident meme really works in Bitcoin. But well, it works better from an arrow if you've lost your private keys in your boating accident, I suppose. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Do you love coffee and Monero as much as we do? Consider making gratuitous.org your daily cup. Pay with Monero for premium fresh beans, and if you like what you taste, send a digital cash tip directly to the Guatemalan farmers that made it possible. Proceeds help us grow this channel, gratuitous, and Monero. You have any? Do you have any uh, Monero questions? Have you have you researched it at all? Have you tr looked into it, or you're just? Uh... Do I have any Monero questions? That's yeah. that's good. So, okay, so maybe I can put it to you this way. So why would one want to buy, and, like is, is Monero a buy and hold? Is it a store of value like a Bitcoin or is it a buy to move money around privately? Um, I guess people would argue different things. You know, I would see it as, uh, I think it competes with the use case of digital gold in addition to being digital cash. Okay. Um, so you see it as a store of value. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And um, does it, and I would imagine that it probably performs better than physical gold still though, right? Uh, I mean, pretty much anything performs yeah, better yeah, than yeah, 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 physical definitely. gold is a store of value. I mean, it's, it started Except off for fiat currency. Right. <laughs> You can Monero use that for toilet paper in a few zero, years. Like, like Bitcoin, right? And it was, right. Uh, it was whatever, 500 a coin, you know, mm -hmm. went for, you know, at certain points in its in existence, if you got into it, you've, your growth far exceeded that, uh, that of Bitcoin. Right. Um, you know, but it's only been around since 2014. I mean, Bitcoin's only been around since 2009, right? So it's a store of value for the decent store of value for as long as it's been around, which isn't, you know, thousands of years, right? It's uh, a decade. Mm -hmm. plus um but yeah so i think i think it could certainly uh play the role and will play the role of store value more and more over time i mean it, it's a network it's a network and as it grows in adoption it you know it it, it uh medcalf's law applies right so mm -hmm. with, with each new node and new user the, the network itself becomes vastly more valuable uh and that gets reflected in in the price of the units that are that are part of the network. Um, so as adoption grows, the value of Monero will most definitely grow as well as as people mm -hmm. need it and use it more. Um, but I think you know, 
I really see the utility as being digital cash. Uh, and I think um, store of value is something that grows out of that. And I think in Bitcoin, uh, you know, to say it's, it's a good store of value is, is it a good store of, do you think it's a good store of value because it works well as digital cash or just somehow on its own, it's just acting as this store of value? Because for, for me, I don't really fathom how that's, that's really even possible. Yeah, well. that's an interesting question because I mean, like the reason why a $20 bill is worth $20 is because everybody agrees that it's mm -hmm. worth $20, right? right. If, you know, if we all started to disagree that it has no value and you can't exchange it for something worth $20, it becomes useless. So the only reason why Bitcoin is now being viewed as a store of value is because the vast majority of people that buy it, they generally buy it to hold it and they take it off exchanges and they hold their private keys. I mean, some of it they might stake, you know, for example, just in a little bit of interest. But mm -hmm. for the most part, it seems like most people seem to start agreeing now that it's essentially digital gold. It's a better version of digital gold. Does it work for payments? Yes, absolutely. You know, I mean, I could send you a payment for if I wanted to book you for an hour of a private consult on how to get divorced and stash my cash in Monero, you know, I could send that over to you sort of thing, but people are going to know that I sent that over to you, you know, as a payment. So yeah, I mean, when people start to see, it's interesting. Um, what was his name? Uh, Yuval Noah Harari. He was the guy that talked about uh, the book Sapiens. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. He also happens to be the guy that's working with Klaus Schwab as well. But the notion of what he researched and put in that book, Sapiens, you know, essentially is the reason why humans are so successful as a species and have dominated the earth and reshaped the earth. You know, we could argue that there's no other species on the planet that has reshaped the surface of the planet the way that we have. We've we've grown to that and we've been that successful because because of gossip, essentially, right, because we because, collectively believe in abstract ideas. Correct. So when when the majority of people collectively agree on an abstract idea, it, it becomes standardized. Like if you gave a twenty dollar bill to a dolphin or an alien or an ant, they have no use for it because mm -hmm. they don't agree that it has any value. They don't say it's worth anything. They can't exchange it for anything. They don't care. Right. But humans all agree that a $20 bill is worth $20 right now until it isn't. Right. Right. Which we've seen happen in countries, you know, in the past. So when people start agreeing that something is more useful on the blockchain, let's say it's Monero and they start shifting to that. And it might take like a black swan event or something crazy, you know, happens in society. Um, I mean, we're watching what's going on right now between Russia and Ukraine. And it looks like they're going to start taking payments in Bitcoin now. So they're moving on to the blockchain. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's starting to happen. Um, then, you know, the masses start to kind of move in that direction. Um, you know, we had the truckers over here in Canada that went up to Ottawa. I'm sure you heard that story. Yeah. Um, and the government froze all these truckers' bank accounts. That You know, they seized their money. They canceled their insurance. They towed their trucks. Some people were incarcerated. Um, you know, that was great for the blockchain. That was great for Bitcoin, Monero, and all the other stuff that's out there. Like it brought awareness to it because people started to realize, well, if we were using this instead of a bank account, this problem wouldn't exist and the government can't impose their will on you sort of thing. Right. So it just takes more adoption. It takes more awareness on that. Right. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that focusing on the sheep is the best way to do it. In fact, I disagree. I think the best way to do it is to focus on the persuadables, which are kind of between the sheep and the sheepdogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the thing, the thing with the the truckers too, it it, it ex once again it exposed the Bitcoin weakness, though, right? Because right. they blacklisted uh, Bitcoin wallets. Yeah. Uh, and with Monero, that that wouldn't have been an issue. So we we are starting to see those examples too. Uh, same same with uh, you know Ukraine, right? Like, um, I don't know if I don't know if you know if you're if you're living in Russia and maybe you're opposed to what Putin's doing, and you want to fund you know, uh, those that are fighting in Ukraine ag ag against Russia, you probably don't want to send Bitcoin, right? Uh, right. Because you don't want to be on a permanent 
like Putin's permanent shit list, right? Where he can <laughs> one day potentially figure it out, figure out who sent that transaction. Right. Uh, you're probably going to want to send that with Monero. So yeah, I think I think we're seeing more and more real world examples of you know Bitcoin having a use case and Monero having a use case, 100. percent and then with the you know the shared abstract ideas right so like you know twenty dollars is worth twenty dollars because we all think it is um but there there are you know there are factors that are that are, there's a reason why right we all think a 20 is a 20. Right? Mm -hmm. that's not completely random uh just like there's a reason why we think gold has value right why we attribute value to gold right mm -hmm. not completely random it's because gold has certain characteristics correct um that's why over time it's taken on this uh, store of value use case and it and it does it arguably better than any other naturally occurring you know element right mm -hmm. for, for for reasons that you know it's durable it's whatever fungible is being one of them right so the do you do you um look at those things right so that's another argument that's made in monero land uh versus bitcoin so n privacy being important digital cash is private uh cash is private so digital cash should be private but cash should also be fungible uh and because bitcoin is built on a transparent ledger not every bitcoin equals every other bitcoin so it doesn't really mimic gold as well as something as you know, Monero may do because it's it's actually yeah. Uh, fungible. Yeah, maybe people will wake up to that fact and start moving Bitcoin over to Monero. Yeah, so I mean, I see it as a store of value, um, but yeah, as as digital cash first, digital cash first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, the other thing too is just the uh, the ability of it to uh, be resistant. Um, to, like we said, to control by the government. So obviously the privacy plays into that, uh, making it potentially, uh, arguably more censorship resistant, right? Because if they can't see how much you're sending, then it's 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 harder for them to censor, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then the the mining um, is, is a big thing. So like I was saying earlier, like Monero is mined with CPUs. So- um, Yeah, the cost of mining is considerably less with Monero, right? Well, not yeah, not even the cost. I mean, over time, it's a proof of work coin, right? So it's mm -hmm. gonna, you know, takes energy, and you got to run, you got to run computers that basically solve puzzles, right? Mm -hmm. um, but with Monero, it's designed so that the the ASIC of Monero is the CPU, so you can't really build specialized hardware that will give you a significant advantage over, you know, the general CPU that's in everybody's phone or on their computers. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it creates a more egalitarian mining network, making it even more permissionless so that anybody anywhere can mine uh, and that you don't have this natural tendency for mining to become centralization as those with access to create these ASICs become the miners, right? Which we're seeing with Bitcoin. You have these mega cor big corporate corporations that are running the mining all the all the mining for bitcoin yeah with every big problem like that they you know they try to solve it with uh you know big solutions that get that get people to adopt it and i think that that argument that they're using with the uh green renewables solar wind you know all that stuff geothermal mm -hmm. <laughs> volcanoes <laughs> you know in the case of el salvador um yeah it, it's um you know it's something that's that's got a lot of traction and support behind it so um, again, it's, it's, you know, it's the whole gossip thing, right? Is what are, what do the masses or the vast majority of people all agree on right now? Just look at the top, uh, 10 cryptocurrencies, right? Yeah. 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 They think yeah. that those are the use case models currently. So, you know, you have to keep an eye on that. Like you can't be stupid to that fact and ignore it. Ignore what, you know, what you're saying, what the inertia where, where people exactly yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah what the what the gossip is on you know right now yeah. the gossip is on those items yeah but i think there's there's obviously a big disconnect between the gossip and what's actually providing utility there always is yeah people you know people still think that the government cares about them <laughs> <laughs> right. i think that's one of the best jokes in the world <laughs> <laughs> i'll vote for him because he cares about me yeah, yeah.
fools. Right? Uh, yeah, I meant in this case, the disconnect where like like people use Monero when they need digital cash. Those that understand it when they need to use digital cash, they're choosing Monero right there. In the dark markets, they're using it. In the you know whatever, they're using it. Yeah. Like sure, it's like. I think it's got a bit of a PR problem, you know, for being honest, right? I mean, like when you use words like dark market, right? Like how do you get the masses, the persuadables, and eventually the sheep to start to see it as, you know, something that's useful when you call it, you know, part of the dark market? Yeah, I mean, that's the terminology that's used. I, pr I prefer, you know, open and free markets. Um, but, you know, I, even, the, even the term privacy coin, I think that's that does a disservice. I don't yeah. think, like, I think, you know, we don't call cash there isn't cash and then privacy cash. Mm -hmm. There's just Everybody cash. Just expects cash to be private. Right? right. But I mean, if people thought that cash was like part of the dark market, then they'd question why they're using it. Well, it very much is part of the dark market. They just. I'm not disagreeing with you. It totally is. Stop to think about it, right? <laughs> um, no, but I, I think that that heals over time. Do you think that's. Uh, that's going to be a fundamental, you know, that that's going to be Monero's downfall. The fact that uh, it can't get over its, its public relations. Um, it can be a problem. It, it can certainly be a, a detriment to the masses adopting it and agreeing via gossip that it is the, it is, it is a gold standard. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So what what do you recommend, or what would you what do you think could be done to begin to change that? Well, anytime there's a bit of chaos, like you know, like I love the concept of anti fragility, right? I, I mean, you're familiar with the book. I'm familiar with the concept. Not yeah, the book. but I mean, like anti fragility is a great thing, right? Because whenever chaos is thrown something at it, it actually becomes better, you know, improves it. So over time, as there's you know, black swan events, crazy shit happens, you know, in society, there's wars, there's governments with excessive overreach. Does, does the Monero product excel, move up the rankings, get more adoption? Do the masses, you know, does the gossip spend time on that conversation? Um, would certainly be something that you want to capitalize on, you know, in the trends, you know, mm -hmm. be my recommendation. I would also try to stay away from anything that like, labels that is like dark market, black market, you know, like anything like that. Cause that's, uh, I mean, like you want your grandmother and your mom and your dad and, you know, your school teachers and your government workers and all of these, you know, like the sheep basically out there that are between, you know, the sheep, the sheepdog and the persuadables, um, you need them to see the value. In. And I think that if you're using like dark market words around it, then that echoes, you know, what the government's been saying about the crypto markets for, you know, over 10, 10, 15 years now. Right. Yeah. Oh, it's used to launder money and the bad people over there use it when they know full well that, you know, printed cash is what's used to commit crime. Yeah. Well, I mean, I would just I, I the reason why I talk that way, because I, I don't, you know, necessarily think I don't consider them dark markets necessarily. Right. They're oh, just, well, they're not because you or I wouldn't wouldn't use them for nefarious right. purposes. Right. But, you know, if there's somebody out there having a conversation saying, hey, if you want to hire a hitman, you're going to have to pay him in Monero. Mm -hmm. right because that's the go-to method then you're going to have a bad association with it and of course you know the gossipers out there will pick up on that yeah i mean i'll leave that to other people to talk that you know i just i just try to i just try to talk that talk the truth and then hope that you know people's perception changes around you know what that is right so rather yeah. than trying to i think that the that the that the big challenge you're going to have with monero is that we know the government wants they want to know what's going on. They want control and they want more of it and they want to manipulate the public and they can't do that if um, there's a barrier between them and doing that. So they're not going to be friendly to it. They're, they're going to be more friendly to something like Bitcoin because it's a transparent ledger exactly. right now, right? So it's like, you know, okay, can you, can you move some people over? Like is Bitcoin the gateway drug to other cryptocurrencies than Monero? that offer more privacy sort of thing. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's got to start somewhere. Yeah, no, I think that the, yeah, Bitcoin's a Trojan horse for those purposes. Right. So yeah, I ran, for, I ran for Congress in New York for that, for that very reason. Right. With How the, did you uh, do? Uh, did pretty well. I mean, I didn't win, uh, but I ran, I ran as a Republican in a democratic district and we did better than anybody in 
uh, you know, the last, I don't know, a few decades. Yeah, it's interesting that you say that because, I mean, I've been paying attention to politics and I have people, you know, that have asked me to run for pr premier, prime minister, whatever, you know, mayor, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like I look at the voting voting patterns of society and I look at the writings and I see what they voted for and I see what they voted for in the past. And it's like our, our libertarian um, guy here in Canada, mm -hmm. uh, his name is Max Bernier. I don't know if you've heard of him. No, I don't know him. He, he, of course, right? Because <laughs> because nobody wants to talk about him. Nobody wants to gossip, about, you know, about him. They use uh, slang and slander terms like Mad Max for him, right? Mm. Uh, but he's the guy that says no vaccine passports. I'm good with cryptocurrency. You know, like, he's probably the only candidate out there that would support um, Monero. But mm -hmm. when the last election happened, his party got zero seats in the House. None. Mm. Right. They couldn't win a single riding because people don't vote for that. So, you know, when I see a trend moving towards more people voting for freedom and privacy and they start to elect, you know, some candidates and they get some seats, you know, in the House, then I then I see the gossip moving in that direction. Right. You yeah. see what's going yeah, well, on. You have to admit it's not just about come on, man. You're 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 an alpha, right? We we need the alphas to I'm the unplugged alpha, bro. You know, that's, yeah, that's you, the title of the book. Yeah. So it's not about uh just watching the gossip. It's about, you know, creating what the next what the gossip should be and, and yeah. people to to listen and, and follow it, right? Well, th that's that's the whole preacher mentality, right? And that's why I haven't run for politics because I know what politicians and the bureaucrats and the system is all about. So what I do is I just watch and I say, okay, you know, people are storing value in Bitcoin right now. It's it's probably going to appreciate more than anything else out there. I mean, there's some that'll blow up more, obviously, but it's the more stable one. Mm -hmm. So that's where more of my holdings will be. And, you know, when it's necessary to use a blockchain for privacy, then I can move it over to Monero sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so I just, I'm a, I'm just a real t realist, right? Like I'm not going to shill something just because, you know, whatever I'm, I'm in it for me. I'm about mental point of origin. And that's what the unplugged alpha is all about is being in it for themselves. So that means participating in what serves you. And if what serves you is complete privacy, pile it all into Monero. Mm -hmm. If what serves you is some privacy and some store of value that's going to appreciate and probably be safer than the other stuff that's out there, pile more of it into Bitcoin and hold, you know, what you want and the other coins that you want. So that's what I'm about. It's it's really like, don't tell me what to do. It's I'm going to do what's good for me. And the the good for you in this case is because it's it's the one that's most likely to to go up in value. Right now, yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I, I totally. You know, there's there's no argument to be made there, right? Uh, and that, that's how that's how all rational people act, uh, which is thankfully the majority of people uh right uh so they're looking out for their own interests and they're they're trying to choose what's what's good for them um yeah i mean the reason i do monero is because i think it's the one that has the potential to be most disruptive to governments and to you know siphon power away from them that's why i'm ultimately uh driven by that um, do I want it to go up in price? Yeah, obviously I want it to go up price because that means it's succeeding, right? Um, mm. And yes, and personally, I, I I'll have a you know a, a more liberated life in that respect because I'll I'll have more money. Um, but ultimately, driven by this desire to help a technology succeed that's going to really disrupt the the current. Uh, you or I broadcasting about it is probably not going to change anything a black swan event that affects bitcoin negatively where money would be wise to move from bitcoin to monero mm -hmm. that's when you have to capitalize on the trend and, and broadcast on that and you know stand on your soapbox and yell as loud as you can but right now it's i have i only have 24 hours in a day and a limited amount of energy to dispense in that day um i have other things that i need to spend that energy on that's why I don't stand on a soapbox and talk about, you know, specific cryptocurrencies. I only talk about it as it's relevant to a topic that I'm dealing with. Yeah, understood. Understood. Um, but yeah, I guess you would you would uh, agree that there's there's value in, in trying to spread the ideas, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's all I'm doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Good stuff. 
Anything yeah. else you want to you want to chat about with regards to Monero? No, that's good. Um, let me know when you got it edited and published. And if you have some, uh, I don't know if you use clips or you do a long form form. I can have my editor take it and put it on my clips channel. If you guys are okay with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do with it whatever you want with it. Yeah, well, we'll let you know. Open soon. source, bro. <laughs> <laughs> A little distracting because you're facing you're facing another camera, so I'm not I'm not seeing your. I'm not yeah, I have you. a I have a giant DSLR over here, and okay. like the screen's over here, so I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I got to look at you when I'm talking. Unfortunately, okay. so you see yeah. the side of my head. Yeah, no worries. All right, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, hope to, uh, you know didn't mean to like you know jam and narrow down down your throat in any way, but uh, you know this is what, what people come to to listen about so no it's all about testing ideas man so it's like you know you don't want to live in an echo chamber and i listen i'm i'm all about anything that um gives you privacy takes back your freedom you know gives you control of your life but i'm also about you know the reality of what the masses are gossiping about and what has the best potential to serve me personally mm-hmm yeah, and I can't, like I said, I can't disagree. You know, obviously, that's that's what people should be doing, but at the same time, you don't want, you know, why not try to change the gossip, right? Which I think you personally participated. The same in. reason why I don't run for a seat in the House of Commons here in Canada, because I know I'm not going to get the votes because people are too stupid to vote for a guy like me, and I'm and I'm, you, I'm not a liar. Like I can't play that game, so it's not going to work out. But why is it lying? I'm not saying go lie to the people. I'm saying do what you're doing, right? What you actually do on your show. Or... I know, but people don't want freedom. They want free shit, which is why we have, you know, Justin Trudeau and Jagmeet Singh leading in the polls and running Canada and destroying the shit out of the country. Okay. But your whole your whole show is is showing people the, you know, the, the, the hidden truths that hurt. Right. So yeah. I think I think it aligns with that, right? Yeah, so. man. Hey, listen, I'm totally with you. But where we differ is I'm a mental point of origin guy, which is put put my interests first. I'm not about putting the interests of Monero first. I'm about putting my interests first of what serves me. And I ask people to do the same for themselves, you know, do what's best for you. So if you feel that it's best for you to uh, huddle, you know, a, a big stack, a big moon bag full of uh, Monero, dude, I hope it works out for you at the end of the day, right? Yeah. Okay. No, I'm, I'm, I, I believe personally that I'm putting my interests first. I guess we just, you know, obviously it depends on what, uh, what you believe, you know, most aligns with your interests, right? Yeah, I got you. So I think, I think we're, we're, we're on the same plane here. We're, we're both uh, looking out for our own interests just in different ways. Yeah. All right, Matt. <laughs> Greatly appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks for the chat and the, uh, you know, challenging me on the topic it was, you know, it was a fun conversation. Shoot me uh, or. Just have somebody shoot me an email when it's all done and edited, and I'll um, I'll get my editor to take what he can and use it for my clips channel. Will do. All right, man. Nice meeting you, Doc. You too. Have a good See one. Bye. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to our show on YouTube, Odyssey, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Go to MoneroTalk.live to subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.